You are now watching Tales from the Grid. Using Figpin as an example, you can see that they were not able to reach their max profit. At this point in time, Figpin has retired all of the Mighty Morphin pins within a year of release. A reissue slash new batch must have an order of at least 1,000 pins. If no reissue is ordered within a year of when the last batch was made, that Figpin will be retired slash discontinued. After almost a year, the core Ranger pins still have not sold out yet. The standard green and white Ranger pins are sold out, but there's no interest in manufacturing another batch of 1000, especially since other variations are still available but aren't really moving. Even the box set is on sale for 40% off. Based on their experience with Mighty Morphin pins, Figpin may be discouraged from producing more Power Ranger products due to the lack of sales from the most popular team. If all went well, they could have expanded Mighty Morphin into their Figpin XL line with Megazord pins, but now we may never see that happen. It's also a wrap for getting other Ranger teams made. Generally, Mighty Morphin is the test run that opens the door for the rest of the franchise. If Mighty Morphin fails, the rest of the teams fail as well. I've been waiting years for Power Ranger fig pins and it's truly disappointing that this line of pins couldn't make it past a year. I interpret this message as Hasbro saying that they were losing money to the point where they had to reevaluate the value of their brands and how much money their brands were making. Hasbro then implemented their Bluetooth 2.0 strategy to cancel projects which affected Power Rangers. Hasbro determined that Power Rangers wasn't bringing in a lot of money and therefore the value was lowered causing Hasbro to take a $281 million loss. Some of the cancelled projects were the reduction of Cosmic Fury episodes, cancelled Cosmic Fury figures, and the pausing of the Lightning Collection. Hasbro has contributed to their own loss as evidenced by some of the products they put out. The overstock shelves can be a sign that there's a disconnect between what the customers want versus what Hasbro puts out. This could be solved with market research or community outreach, but as evidence in previous live streams, Hasbro will assign people who don't know or don't care about Power Rangers to manage and oversee their brand. For instance, the Omega Ranger comics were talked about a lot online because of character choices, not because fans wanted Omega figures, which now sit on Clarence. The decision to release overpriced crossover figures like the Skelly Putty and the Morph Cami were a waste of resources and materials, while the release of a shieldless remastered Green Ranger was a sad attempt of forcing customers to buy the remastered Red Ranger to obtain the Green Ranger's Dragon Shield. Not only was Hasbro not seeing favorable profits from Power Rangers, but third party manufacturers were feeling the burn as well. Figpin released and discontinued their Power Ranger pins within a year. Lineage Studios and Icon Heroes had to liquidate inventory due to the discontinuation of the Power Ranger license. Super 7 had to cancel figures due to lack of pre-orders. All of these problems seem to revolve around the lack of money Power Ranger products bring in. Taking a look at this infographic, assuming it to be accurate, shows that out of all the countries where they were able to gather data from, there's only 6 countries where Power Rangers is the most popular Netflix original show for kids. Out of those six countries, five of them have an average weekly salary that is nowhere near the US minimum wage's weekly salary. This information can be interpreted as Power Ranger fans don't have the money to buy the products they want. It's also not a good look for Power Ranger fans when well-known members of the community are selling off their collections or straight up asking for money to pay for their rent or to buy food. There's something that other brands, even ones older than Power Rangers, are doing that Power Rangers isn't. Or maybe it's that the other brands have fans who actually buy their products instead of fans who hang on to the hope that Hasbro will send them free products. If a singer has fans who doesn't buy their music, their merch, or their concert tickets, then the fans shouldn't complain when the singer quits. The same can be applied to Hasbro and the Power Ranger brand. At the end of the day, it's a business, not a charity. Hopefully Power Rangers will make a comeback. Maybe one of the fans win the lottery and buys Power Rangers from Hasbro, who knows? Thank you for watching another episode of Tales from the Grid, and until next time, have a good one. <laughs>